Are you ready? Can crush us. Hey. It don't really get no better than better this. The than. podcast that you're looking for. If you're really heavy in the wrestling, hosted by the Mark. Energy that's so amazing. Gotta keep it entertaining. Rep the Can Crusher Nation. Yeah, you know what's going down in the ring. In the ring. Lights out when you hit a ding ding. ding, ding. Knock them out like boom, bada bing. Bada bing. Hold it down, you can crown me the king. Got a shout out to the Miz and Duke the Dumpster. We choke slamming everybody, power driving. Hit them with a face buster. Yeah, yeah. This the show you need an and it ain't no need for waiting. Mark, hold it down for the can crush a nation. All about wrestling and keep it entertaining. Can crushers wrestling podcast. Time to break them. Let's go. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Yeah, 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 yeah. Can crushers. Let's go. What's up, guys? This is Jared Fritz, official for the NWA, and you're getting ref fit with the Can Crushers Podcast. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to another Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I am your host, Mark the Mark Martinez, and we're heading back to high ground professional wrestling for another Spotlight episode. And I am on the fence about this one. I just don't know. My guest this week and I have had run-ins in the ring, out of the ring, backstage. I just feel disrespected by this man, but I'm going to put it all aside, be the journalist that I am, and find out everything we can about Fletcher Young. This man has pushed the mic into me, has had words backstage. Just, you can hear it in my voice. I'm just... I don't know, but again, I'm going to put it aside for the business, for the spotlight, and we're going to talk to the self-proclaimed hottest commodity in professional wrestling, Fletcher Young. We'll get to that. We will. But you guys, you know what we have to do. First and foremost, I have to thank you all for continuing to listen to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Without you, there's no Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. I'm talking to myself. Now, I do like talking to myself or my family. They uh, they understand. But without you guys continuing to grow the numbers and jumping on board, especially with this high ground series here locally for myself in Pennsylvania, that's really awesome. Numbers have been growing because of high ground. So thank you very much everyone at high ground and thank you very much to everybody across the world that's awesome but we need you to do something share these episodes tell everybody about them and just say hey listen to can crushers they have had legends rising stars and hall of famers on this show that we get awesome wrestling stories and i do hope i get one from fletcher young this afternoon so we'll dive into all of that we also have to tell you about Collar and Elbow. Hats, hoodies, tees, all the cool stuff that Al Snow and the Hooligans are making down at Collar and Elbow. We can save you money when you buy the amazing apparel that they have there. Just use the pro- promo code CANCRUSHERS. All one word smashed together. A capital C in CAN, a capital C in CRUSHER, and you'll save 10% off of your order. That's awesome. In the economy today, if you can save 1%, it's great. But 10% is 10 times better. That's math. That's easy math for Mark. So continue to do that, and it helps support the podcast as well. Get involved in our socials, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and Threads. We are now on Threads. Uh, it's really cool. I, I do like the, th- the Threads thing. It's not toxic right now, so join all of our socials are at CanCrusher69. Join the discussions, slide into our DMs, especially if you want to be spotlighted like Fletcher Young and the many that we've had on the show before. Just slide in and say, hey man, I'd, I'd like to be spotlighted too. We'll get you scheduled. Or you can send us an email at CanCrusher69 at gmail.com. We'll get you set up, and we'll do all the cool stuff. Guys, I really like if you would share episodes just so more people can get them or wherever you listen to them. 
have it be on iHeart, iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Boxcast, Google Play, Alexa, wherever. Wherever you listen to them, if you can rate them and review them, that's awesome. That just gives us a little tick up and it really helps out the whole algorithm of professional wrestling podcast. Not just myself, everybody across the board. This isn't a contest for me. It really isn't. I want great wrestling podcasts out there for everybody to listen to because everybody has their own style. Everybody has their own shtick and you get great stories from all of them. So support wrestling podcasts. That's what's cool. Just like you support indie pro wrestling. All right, guys, here comes Al Snow to tell you more about Collar and Elbow. And then when we come back, we'll have the self-proclaimed hottest commodity in professional wrestling, Fletcher Young. Wrestling. A love and a passion we all share. I've started a wrestling brand. The wrestling brand. A brand founded on the aspects of wrestling. Two entities working together to create a product that connect emotionally for people everywhere. Collar and Elbow is the brand. Passion and love for wrestling is the drive. I am Al Snow, and this is Collar and Elbow, the wrestling brand. This is Nathaniel Cunningham, and not only is Can Crushers podcast the home of the bad fellows, but it is also the home of High Ground Pro Wrestling. And welcome back to Can Crushers Wrestling Podcast. Guys, I told you how apprehensive uh, I am to have this guest on because we've had the history that we do but again it's for the journalism part it's for the fans to get to know the self-proclaimed hottest commodity in professional wrestling Fletcher Young Fletcher how are you doing today mark the mark how is my favorite ring announcer doing I'm doing well. Is this uh, is this all going to be snide comments the whole way, or can we be cordial and put wrestling in the past for a minute and let everybody know what's going on? Well, I can't promise it'll be cordial the whole time, but you know, I'll do my best to give my fans what they want. That's an in-depth look at me. So, you know, Mark, just be on your best behavior during this. I will. I will because once we get down the line, I think you're going to realize that I completely respect you, see what you have going in your future. I just think there's, and you're going to backhand me through the phone, you have an attitude problem, but you don't have a wrestling problem. No, I don't have a wrestling problem. I also wouldn't say I have an attitude problem. I think it's more of, I know that I hold myself higher than others, and I'm pretty much holier than thou including everybody in the high ground locker room. So it's really just I'm out of place there because people, they can't relate to me. I can respect that then. Now that looking at it that way, I mean, I'm not waving the Fletcher Young flag yet because we've had a history, but I can respect the way that you look because when we get there, we'll get there. So I'll just, that's a teaser for everybody. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. So let's find out how Fletcher Young, as a little Fletcher, discovered professional wrestling. Mom, Dad, Uncle Joe, Aunt Sally, who said, hey, Fletcher, watch this because you're going to be one of the greatest at this someday. Yeah, it was passed down. I'm the youngest of five, so many others have watched before me. So brothers and sisters and cousins have watched and my earliest memory is probably going to the local arena in Wilkes-Barre and seeing Kane come out with Paul Bear. So I was probably around three or four based on the Attitude Era timeline. Um, we were up in the cheap seats. I remember being terrified of Kane and like hiding behind my mom's leg. So that's my earliest memory. I couldn't tell you what else happened that night, but Kane coming out with Paul Bear is, yeah, like that's like burned into my brain. That's my earliest memory. 
And what? then my earliest memory of a match would be Royal Rumble 2000 oh, with uh, The Rock winning. It's a great Royal Rumble, by the way. It's a it's, great Royal Rumble. W- was Kane your your monster then that you were just I, clearly that day you were hiding behind mom but was Kane your monster your whole childhood that you just were I, I don't want to keep using the word scared but were were scared of but you were intrigued by him I think intrigued is a better word um yeah for sure he was you know he was under the mask and doing all that stuff burning people alive and everything and then when he took the mask off, I think he got, you know, even scarier, but probably until about, you know, seven, seven or eight, he was definitely the guy that I was most intrigued by because he was burned alive and his parents were dead and they burned in the Paul Bears, semi, uh, whatever it was. Um, yeah, he was, he was definitely one of them. Yeah, his <laughs> brother hated scary. him. Yeah, his brother hated him, The Undertaker. Hey, Paul Bear dug up Undertaker's parents and brought him out onto the stage, and Kane Choke slammed the Undertaker through his mother's casket. Right? How sick was that? What, <laughs> what was? As an adult, I look back at it and I'm like, man, that was that was really effed up watching that as a child. Maybe that's part of some of the issues that I have. But you know, WWE at that time spared no expense on doing anything. Mm-hmm. Is that kind of? And I don't mean it. It may be in the mental state or anything, but is there a little PTSD about that whole thing? Um, I would, so I was young at the time. So attitude, Eric Kane is very different than from what Ruth's aggression Kane was. But, you know, right now I'm rewatching, I've been rewatching old raws and pay-per-views from 96. I'm in, almost done with 98 now. So looking back on how, just how crazy everything was, I mean, if I was a teenager in the Attitude Era, I would just think this was the coolest thing ever. I wouldn't have been it scared was. at all, but it was it was definitely a different time, and just the storylines were out of this world. Uh, for sure. Uh, brought up Kane a lot, but who are some of your other favorites that you kind of transition to the liking as well? Yeah, it's pretty much all the Ruthless Aggression guys. John Cena, Batista, uh, Triple H, Shawn Michaels. Edge, Randy Orton, Christian, guys like that. Definitely, uh, I like watching their stuff and just, you know, learning from them. I, I, the Attitude Era, the Attitude Era, the wrestling wasn't really top notch. Oh, no. Yeah, Shawn Michaels until 90, WrestleMania 14, and then he retired for like five years. But the wrestling really wasn't top notch. It was more about what is Stone Cold going to do tonight? What's Vince going to do tonight? what's DX going to do. So it was, you can't learn, you could learn re- good wrestling from guys like Owen Hart from the attitude era, but watching, you know, Val Venus, you're not going to learn a whole lot. Not to put, not to, not to bur- bury him, but he was more, he was showman. more character. Yeah. yeah. He's more of a showman. I, it's funny you brought that up because it was earlier this week and it was raining outside. So uh, clearly nothing to do. So let's watch wrestling on YouTube. And mm-hmm. this was brought up about the the whole Attitude Era against everything. If you go back and watch Attitude Era, matches are less than five minutes. Yeah, very Be- short. Because it was just about the, the showmanship. and But we didn't care about wrestling then. Because the Attitude Era, it's not my favorite era. It's not. I, I'll wave that forever. Um, I'm an old school guy. I like the 80s wrestling and stuff like that. But it was just... As a, a teen, you wanted the TNA, you wanted the blowing up stuff, you wanted this, mm-hmm. you wanted that, and that's what kept wrestling alive. I, I completely agree with you. The wrestling, and we're not knocking them, or I'm not knocking them, Fletcher's not knocking them. It just wasn't wrestling. It was a show. Right. It was a show. and I mean, no one cared, though. No one cared there wasn't wrestling. You had, you know, like we talked about earlier, you had people burning alive you had buses blowing up you had sable out there doing what she does and you had stone cold chugging beers no one cared that there wasn't wrestling because audiences were packed and viewership was great and it was just an awesome time period yeah it was so you discover wrestling as a youngster and you know you're watching it with brother sister and in the, in the entire family 
But how do you get, and I'm not talking about your aha moment yet about finding training or anything. How do you get to wrestling? You know, what sports did you do? Because it, it's always there that you wanted to be a professional wrestler. I know that. But how do you get there? Sports through high school, because every sport does lead to wrestling one way or another, at least on can crushers. I spin it that way. Uh, I think it's a fair thing to say because throughout sports, you have competition and then just throughout life, you kind of, I, at least I craved it. Um, mainly it was just baseball up until I think 15, I stopped playing in high school. Uh, and then just, you know, outside of baseball, just like pick up basketball games with friends or football games with friends. And then eventually in high school, I just played golf for the, for my high school. But really after high school is where the competition really started to pick up in me. I joined the gym and was doing CrossFit for about a year. And when you do CrossFit, it's very, and everything's timed and you want to get the best time. And there's always going to be a lot of people better than you and in much better shape. So CrossFit, I would say, really helped develop, um, you know, just something inside where you just want to beat the next guy and beat them, whether it's using more weight and getting a worse time or using less weight and getting a better time. You just want to do something where you could beat that person that you view as better than you, pretty much. Did Seth Rollins have any, you know, pushing not that you know him personally or and if you do good for you i, di I didn't know <laughs> that but did seth rollins being the major crossfit guy that he is you know kind of push you into crossfit uh, i don't think so i think it was more of i don't know I, that would have been 2015 no 2014 so i think the shield was around then so i mean maybe he did but i just remember maybe seeing it on tv or on youtube of like CrossFit games and thought that's cool. And um, that was, I think that was the genesis of it was just seeing it on TV. It's really about the competition for you, right? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So, it, and this is no knock. You really, in your life, you know, non Fletcher, you're very competitive. Like you want to eat a hot dog the fastest. You want to beat your family in a video game. But I, I feel that about you that like, if you're not number one, you're going to prove yourself to be number one the next time. Yeah, well, I'm not going to put poison like a hot dog in my body, unlike you, what? Mark. But yeah, I, I am going to it was a reference as Fletcher. much as possible. Mm, yes, but I know you like hot dogs. I, I but, do. However, <laughs> yeah, I will uh, compete to my fullest in pretty much everything, whether it's you know wrestling, sports, academics, whatever it is. Okay. I don't know too many people from my high school or anywhere or college that went for their masters, and, but I did, and I got it. And hey, not many others can say that. There you go, number one. So when did you have that aha moment? And, and tell me how you stumbled or fast tracked to finding professional wrestling and the training center that you went to. Yeah, well, like you said, I mean, most of us that do it on the indies have grown up with it or just loved it. And I was really no different. Uh, like, I don't know, probably since I was younger, I wanted to be a wrestler and come 19, I was in college and I really didn't like college at the time. And I was just like, man, I just want to drop out, maybe go do HVAC at Johnson college and learn a trade. And I snapped myself and, I was like, wow, that's really stupid. Why work hard for the rest of your life when you could do what I do? I make a lot of money. But anyway, yeah, I was 19. And I really got the urge to wrestle. And I would see on Facebook guys that were in my high school. Their names are uh, Kit Raff and Keita Murray. I would see them on Facebook doing what I wanted to do. And those guys really didn't have – they weren't jacked or super tall or anything like that. They were just – average guys from West Scranton like me. And that's kind of where the itch came from. I didn't know there was a local wrestling school called Backbreakers, and I didn't know if you could just go do this whenever you wanted to. Um, but that was that's where the itch started at 19, and I, 
I started writing down ideas on my iPad. And I didn't think I'd ever use them. And then fast forward a few years later, um, I did six years of college. And then, like I said, you know, I have a nice, nice job, nice, make a good living, but I wanted more out of life. You can't get much competition when you're in corporate America, even though you could thrive in it and I am thriving in it, but I just wanted more because that's the kind of guy I am. And so I found backbreakers in uh, 2021. And from there, you know, I graduated from backbreakers. It's now high ground run by Jack Molson. But, you know, if it wasn't for seeing on Facebook from those guys that, you know, I kind of, I knew of, but didn't know, um, I probably wouldn't have, have joined. And again, one thing that you said, and I don't know them, hopefully they'll come on the show someday, but some of your air quotes friends were doing it and you knew that you were better than them. So you're like, I can do this better than them. So I'm going to show them, right? Yeah, I definitely thought that they didn't look super jacked and I knew that I could compete with them if I wanted to and you know, listen, Kit Raff, he trained me for, man, I think seven months out of my year training. So he really, you know, Kit Raff's a great wrestler, and I, I respect Kit Raff a lot. So I'm not going to say anything bad about Kit Raff because I consider Kit Raff a friend. But, man, he's a great wrestler, and he trained me. And so everything I do in the ring, you know, he pretty much taught me. And, you know, hopefully one day our paths cross and we get in the ring together. But, you know, he taught me a lot. I'm sure he didn't teach me everything, so. Oh, no, you can't. We'll you can't. Because <laughs> that's not the way of a trainer. Correct. Correct. He uh, he definitely knows a lot. I see him wrestle at, at Smash Master when I'm there. And, yeah, he hits hard. So he wasn't hitting me that hard in practice. <laughs> well, that's good. That's good. All right, so the, these are the stories that I love, and I know what you're going to say. I really do. I want to talk about your first match and then kind of training as well, so vice versa, training into your first match. Did you ever have that moment? Because, listen, you've been in corporate America for a while. Did you ever have that moment in training? You're like, oof, this is, this is rougher than I thought. Never. I never had that thought because I was surrounded by people that weren't as good of an athlete as I. So I never had the thought of this is hard or it hurt. It hurt after the first few weeks, but then your body gets used to it. Um, but no, I was always running the ropes faster. I was always bumping better. I was always rolling better. I was getting hit harder. I was hitting harder. And I, you know, most guys from my training could not compete. And, you know, that's just a fact. Was there one thing, though, that might have been a little bit harder? The Maybe the running the ropes. Listen, it really does suck. I've done it several times. It, it sucks. Uh, learning to throw yourself on the ground because that's not natural. Or was it the psychology? Because, you know, it, the storytelling psychology kind of flutters with some people, too. Nope, Mark. They call me the hottest commodity for a reason. I am the best in that ring. I am the best outside of the ring. People wish they could be as good as I am in the ring. They wish they could have my life outside of the ring. Psychology, I don't have an issue with that. I could tell you a story. I could hit you hard. I could suplex you, throw you around. You will bump for me. You will lose. Take a microphone to the face. Yeah. Right. Yeah, you will take a microphone to the face and screwdriver to the face, whatever it is. Training was not difficult for me. Um, you could ask my trainers and they will say the same thing. They will say, yeah, that guy is probably the best guy I've ever trained in my professional wrestling career. And that's where it brings me to this point. Okay. I want to ask who Fletcher Young, the hottest commodity in professional wrestling is. Okay. I give you three wrestlers and listen to these because these are all top of the line. I I'm telling you, I, I kind of said it already that, I'm duly on Fletcher's young, you know, bandwagon because you are the hottest commodity in wrestling. So I see you as Mr. Perfect. I see you as Barry Windham. And I see you as the third one I have written down is Shane Douglas. Mm. Perfect because you have that 
essence, that aura around you. You can win without, and I'm going to say this and you're going to yell at me, without doing snide things because you are perfect in the ring. You have the Barry Windham style that you can be technical, but you could also beat somebody's ass. Mm -hmm. And then Shane Douglas, you are the franchise. So I, I, I hold you in the highest regards. I really do. So I think we just got off on the wrong foot. Well, you know, Mark, I actually respect that opinion because you're 100% right. And let's look at someone like Barry Windham. You know, he's in the Blackjacks. He's in Japan. He does all this crazy stuff. When you hit as hard as he does, you know that, okay, I want to do that too. I just want to hit someone as hard as I can and see what happens. And so when I'm in that ring and you hear me punch someone, throw a club onto their back, and you hear a giant thud, you know that I'm hitting them as hard as I can because I could care less about if I'm hurting them or not. So, yeah, watching full clips of someone like Wyndham, definitely, you definitely learn that there's tough guys in this business, and if you want to be one, well, you know, don't be... I curse on this podcast. Yeah, 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 of course. Don't be a bitch. It's not ballet. Just get in the ring. If you're going to get a beating, just take it like a man. And, uh, you know, maybe if you could hit as hard as the other person, they respect you more. But, um, yeah, hitting people as hard as you can is fun. Throwing a big clothesline is fun. Punching someone in the face is fun. So watching old school wrestling like Wyndham when they were doing that, that is very fun for me. And then you make the Mr. Perfect comparison. Listen, the guy was perfect. It's hard to be better than perfect. Do I think I am? Yes. I mean, I'm hot as commodity in professional wrestling. But he was a technician as well. And I think I can go in the ring and if someone wants to grapple, we could do that as well. So whether it's hitting hard, being a technician, I could do it all. You can. You can. Who do you think, you know, those are my three, you know, who have you kind of really watched tape study in, in your earlier on years here to build yourself off of? Or did I, did I nail it with three out of three? I definitely think you can make Mr. Perfect comparison. I think, I mean, I really love Stone Cold. Not, I mean, if you watch the Ringmaster stuff or WCW stuff, he is a great wrestler. Um, but if you want to get over, you have to know how to <clears throat> either get under the audience's skin or you have to learn how to make the audience cheer you. So he did both. He was a heel in East, well, semi heel in ECW, but in the WWF, he's the biggest baby face of all time. He turns heel. He gets booed a little bit, not too much because people still love him. But you have to learn from guys like that on how to get over, whether you're a good guy or a bad guy. So Stone Cold is definitely the guy that I love watching because he could do it all. Um, I would say, other than those two, I would have to think just because, I mean, I think Shawn Michaels is the best wrestler of all time. So I definitely watched a lot of him, whether it's old Shawn Michaels, I didn't really, probably 95 to 97, I watched just about every match of his. And then, obviously, since I've been growing up, I've watched him since he retired in 2011. <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, he's the greatest of all time. And I think you could learn so much from watching him, whether it's psychology and how to bump or how to interact. Um, I would definitely say he's he's definitely the third one I would compare myself to. That's a, that's a great list. It really is. Where, not where, Mark. Jeez. Um, Get it together, Mark. I know, right? It, it, I'm still a little nervous on this end because I just feel August 12th, something's going to happen. I, 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 don't. I mean, you're you're a Mark. You call yourself Mark the Mark. So Marks think they know everything and they want to be in with the wrestlers. But listen, you're talking to a wrestler right now. You're talking to a great wrestler right now. And you're nervous. I get it. I really am nervous. I'm actually petrified. It's it's more scared yeah, I mean, because of what's going normal. to happen. I, 
most people when they come up to me are terrified, but listen, just talk to me. I'm going to talk above you, but just know that you could talk to me. Okay. I can talk to you. So let's take a break from wrestling stuff though, real quick. And then find out, you know, Fletcher Young, you know, day off stuff. What do you do in the day off? Are you, and and I know you're bigger than video games or anything like that, but you know, you Mm -hmm. have to have mental relaxation every once in a while. Like, what do you do? I go to the gym five or six days a week. So that's a big one. Um, I would golf. I have a very hot girlfriend. So we go breweries, wineries, wherever she wants to go, we go to, um, I have a dog who just turned 16 on July 8th. So she takes up a lot of my time because she's old and I have to take care of her. But other than that, um, I bike. I have a few bikes that I like to go on, not motorcycles or anything, but uh, mountain biking. And I have an electric bike that I go on yesterday or no, what was it? It was Friday, this past Friday. I did 14 miles. That was my first ride all year since getting my cast off my arm. Um, Yeah, so 14 miles after not being too active because of that, which is pretty good. Pretty good. Um, yeah, pretty good. Yeah, yeah, That's pretty awesome. Yeah. Yeah, not, not too bad. Um, yeah, a lot of the sports, whether it's just going to play cornhole or play basketball, anything like that. Um, that's pretty much everything. I play the guitar, at least learning to play the guitar. I'm about seven months into that. Again, the broken arm made me take a little break from that. But, yeah, I mean, other than that, you know, I, I gave you a lot there. I'm a pretty active guy. You really are, and there's a lot that I want to come off of. One, you said you go to brewery. So what kind of is your – what's your favorite beer? Um, I like – I mean, I do like – if you go to SBC, I pretty much like all their fruity beers. Um, if you go to, like, Breakers Brewing, whether in Wilkes-Barre, Archibald, I like the brown ale. That is um, delicious, by the way. Yeah, that is yeah, but amazing. Yeah. Brown ales are pretty good. I do like like if you if you have a fruit, it's it's good, but I mean I had my first beer at twenty one, it was a blue moon, so maybe that's where the the kick came from because that had a nice orange taste. But uh yeah, don't give me like I did I did enough damage on Coors Light, so I don't want Coors Light anymore. I kind of matured to a a more flavorful beer. Yeah, a full beer instead of just water alcohol. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly. You enjoy I mean, it now. You're not just drinking it to party. <laughs> yeah, I mean, every once in a while we'll we'll pull them out to to party, but yeah, for the most part, I I I enjoy them. Um, I try not to do too much, obviously, because I'm trying to look good for the people in the crowd. But, yeah, I mean, I enjoy one here and there. I would definitely say SBC is probably the best brewery uh, in any PA. For sure. For sure. We, we, when we stayed overnight, we went there actually the following day, and it was the wife drove home. So I was really excited to be there. I'm mm-hmm. still a child sometimes when I go to breweries as well. So, But that's me. So you tell your family that you're getting into professional wrestling, and how how does everybody – you know, the the whole family take that. To be honest, I didn't tell anyone I was doing this other than my girlfriend. Everybody found out that I was a wrestling after I had my first match. Okay. So how do yeah, they take so, it after your first match then? <laughs> well, they were shocked and, you know, I couldn't, I just didn't want to tell them that I was doing this. I mean, I feel like they would have called me crazy and they would have told me, don't do it. You're going to get hurt. You're going to do this and that. But, you know, I don't really care what people think or say. So I wanted to keep it to myself and just enjoy it before it came out. And, uh, yeah, they, they were shocked. They thought I'd get injured for sure. I mean, my brother likes it. He's a big wrestling fan, so he, he thought it was cool. But, you know, my mom and dad, they got for sure, you know, get injured. But, you know, I'm young. I'm in good shape. Nothing's going to happen. 
Yeah, you had the world in front of you for so many, you know, your, your career, your wrestling career and everything. So, yeah. All right, two stupid questions times. Who is your most famous contact that you have in your phone? Um, I would say I have no famous contacts on my phone. You have me. I was now. Uh, you're not famous though. <sighs> okay. Uh, yeah, I would say definitely no famous contacts in my phone. Um. But on, how about this? I have Ricky Price on my phone. He is he is a wrestler that is going to make it one day, I know. So he's on my phone now. Maybe one day when he's famous, I can tell people that, hey, a long time ago, I said he was the most famous contact on my phone. Ricky Price is a good one. It is a good one. And you're right. He, he is going to make it. He really is. Yeah. Uh, second favorite one is favorite places that you've ever been. Because I know you're also a traveler. Um, I would say Jamaica is the best one. That would be number one. Did, uh, did you go to Ocho Rios? No, no. We were at a resort. I, I couldn't tell you what resort it was, but it was a fun time. Um, definitely better water <laughs> when it's nice and clear and you can see what's going on. But, yeah. Food's great over there at the resorts and everything. Everything was great over there. And then I would say in the States, uh, probably Nags had North Carolina as a fun spot too. Jamaica, a lot to do down there. Jamaica is amazing. It really is. Like there's rum in everything. So you're kind of just <laughs> consistently on this. I don't want to say drunk, but you're just on this buzz all the time. It's in the maple syrup. Right. It's in this. It's in that. Definitely my favorite right. spot too. Yeah, and then once you come home and come back to reality, it's <clears throat> it's hard to get a groove once again. But a week or so that you're over there, it's it's definitely paradise. It it really is. You have to detox a couple of days once you get home. Yeah, you have to detox at least like two weeks when you get home. Yeah. Best advice that you've gotten behind the curtain, and who was it from? Sean Carr. He gave good advice after my second second match. It was my second match, and I faced his cousin, Tyler Reed. And, uh, you know, he was just, you know, encouraging. Um, you know, said I had a good look and all that stuff. But, you know, I can't pinpoint, you know, he talked for a few minutes, so I can't pinpoint one thing. But he definitely gave good advice after my second match that I'll, I'll keep with me. But, and then just, I think, uh, Molson gave me, great advice once where he said you know I, he wanted me to wrestle as you know a big a big monster you know and i was like well what what does that mean like i'm 220 pounds i'm not 260 you know so i could i could throw people around but wrestling as a monster when i was in training i didn't really understand what he meant because you know like we talked earlier like kane was a monster undertaker but um you know, he just said that means, you know, when you punch someone, you punch someone with authority. You don't punch them several times. You just do it once and make the people hear, it, you know, one and if done, you, knock him on his ass. And, right. If you give someone uh, a beal out of the corner, you don't just go chase after them and, you know, start doing the next thing. You know, you make them wait for you to get there so that they can feel the impact that they just had on their body. So he really helped me out with that because I, when he would say it during training, I want you to be a monster. You know, I really had no idea what he was talking about because I don't view myself as that. But now I, I understand that mentality. What's your favorite thing about pro wrestling? Is it the, the physicality? Is it the, the storytelling? What kind of really fuels your fire? I definitely love the physicality, but... I much would rather tell you a story than put on a move, a, a match with, you know, jumping over the rope, and jumping off the rope and jumping off the apron, all that. Yeah, you're stuff. not Ricochet. I will say that. You're like, you're not Ricochet, right? No, no, I, I could care less about it. I mean, if you could do it, do it and you'll get over and you'll get views on Instagram or Twitter or whatever you want. But it's not for me. That's not the type of wrestling I grew up with. So I'll just leave it at that. But I like storytelling. I liked 
getting in there and you know talking crap to the crowd and look at look at me and the dude we right. had you know his his first match against me he cheated to win you know he pulled my tights the next match you know i don't know what would have happened but I, my arm was broke so i couldn't wrestle but hey after that guess what i don't like his look i don't like his lifestyle so i'm going to try to change that i'm going to cut his hair off so i cut a piece of his hair off the next month okay and now what happens hair versus hair i want to cut his hair well it's only fair if he gets the chance to cut my hair so i'd rather tell you a story whether it's a five minute story or a three month story than give you a mat classic you know i i completely agree storytelling over a nice six months or listen i'm still a big fan of what's going on with the bloodline and that's two mm-hmm. years essentially that has right. me engulfed right I mean, look at my girlfriend is not a wrestling fan. I will tell you that. But when I was here watching Money in the Bank, she's, you know, in and out of the room and she's on her phone and doing whatever. And, you know, if she sees someone flying off a ladder, she thinks, okay, this, that's more entertaining than a chain, you know, someone's chaining for two minutes. Right. And then the bloodline comes on and, they don't do anything for the first 10 minutes of the match. Like, this is boring. And I just kept my mouth shut because I know something's going to happen in this match to where everyone's going to be going crazy. And obviously that happens. It's no different than Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns. They didn't do anything for 20 minutes in that match. But you don't need, you know, high flying spots constantly to be entertained. You just need to tell a story. And I think, you know, what the bowling is doing is a perfect example. And it's, it's wrestling is that easy sometimes. You don't need to do anything. Um, just entertain and tell a story and use psychology. That's all you have to do. I agree. That's the best thing uh, about professional wrestling, the story and everything. Like it sounds like we're kind of knocking or at least me because I brought it up like the ricochet and high flying stuff. I'm not because everything like that, like there's a great spot for comedy on a wrestling Mm -hmm. show or the high flying or the hardcore or stuff like that. But Fletcher and I aren't talking about that today. We're talking about storytelling and what's really engulfed us the whole time into professional wrestling. So, If you watch any show, there's going to be a high-flying match, and it's cool to watch, and I appreciate it, and I think, wow, that, that spot was really cool and all that stuff. But you can't – you shouldn't have a wrestling show where it's just that. You need to, you need to balance it out. You can't – you know, I think Mick Foley said on his podcast, if your first match is at a 10 – you can't go. You can't go up anymore on the amp. You know, you can't right. go to eleven or twelve. You just go down. So the first match should be a three, and then you build up and up and up. And then in, in the middle, if you want to have that high flying match, just don't do too much crazy stuff because then the main event can't follow that. Right, and you've seen that in recent years that they put number one on, and then it gets to the main event, and you're like, nothing's going to beat what happened in number one. How can you do this? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. It's so that's just why you need you need a balance. You, you do. You, I definitely respect the, the high flyers, though. That's for sure. Oh that's yeah, they're, not my style. They're doing stuff that you know, little Mark or any Mark has never done in his life. And you know, I I struggled with a cartwheel. Get ready. Here comes a knock from you, <laughs> I'm sure. But I struggled with a cartwheel to have them doing five sixties or whatever off the top rope, dude. Kudos to you. Really mm-hmm. kudos to you. So you I mean, did, Mark, I, I, Mark, Mark, Mark. I've seen you a few times. Not only can you not do a cartwheel, but you probably can't even do a push up. So minimally, minimally, you're right. Mm-hmm. You, you're right. Mm-hmm. You did speak a little bit about what's coming up on August 12th because we'll kind of segue to that and come back to some more questions. August 12th, Falcon's Nest. It is hair versus hair. Uh, Fletcher Young against the dude and. You brought this up that, you know, he cheated first match. You mm-hmm. had somebody, uh, Samuel Thompson, kind of fill in for you because you did some things to your arm. You broke them and everything like that. You also kicked the poor guy out of his house. I did. 
and you have no remorse for that. This is where we kind of like is another human being. We're, we were we're building a bond a little bit, and I don't want to go back to the you know where we started. But as another human being, you don't feel bad kicking somebody out of a house. No, no. Why would I? I despise that guy. Look, look at the dude. He comes out. He's got flea market pants on. He's got a shirt that he probably stole. He just happened to come across a dude shirt one day, then decided to call himself the dude. He has disgusting hair, disgusting looking face. I don't know what he does outside of high ground. And I honestly don't want to know because it's probably not legal. Um, and then you have me, you know, I've, I've done much more than he'll ever do in his life. You know, I've, a degree in finance. I have my MBA. I have great job outside of high ground. I pretty much do whatever I want. And then, you know, when I go train, there's always this guy there. He's just sleeping, whether he's sleeping under the ring, in the ring, in the back, in the bathroom, <clears throat> wherever it is, wherever I go, there's the dude. And when I see him, I just want to punch him in his face. Because I know that he is the exact opposite of me. And I know that his lifestyle, that is not the way to live your life, kids. Don't be like the dude. I don't care if he's coming out and making you laugh, giving you gummies. I don't even think he should be given to kids. No, he should not. That's something we don't condone. No gummies to kids. No. No, no. But he does it. And, hey, if those crappy parents in the audience want their kids to take them and hey i'll call child services i don't have an issue with that but i don't like the guy so when i evicted him i was doing high ground a favor i was doing high ground not only a favor i was doing them justice because that guy should not have been living there he was there when the previous owner was there and the previous owner must have forgot about him and he was living there rent free Fletcher Young, he pays his rent, he pays his bills. The dude, he tries to get through life without paying his bills. So I evicted him. I threw him out. But then our stupid commissioner, I don't even know her name because I don't care about her. uh, She decided to have a match where if the dude wins, he gets his job back. So you were there, Mark. I dominated the whole match. You did. Yeah. And then what happened at the end? The guy he cheated. Yeah, he he cheated. He pulled my tights and he cheated and he got his job back. And that's really, you know, that's not a good example for the kids in the crowd. If you cheat, you get you get your job. You get to live where you were paying no bills. What what kind of example is that for the kids? It really isn't. It it really isn't to be a hooligan or a vagabond just to live off of others. It's not. I completely agree with you. I I do. Yeah, and, you know, he beat me. I can't really say much else because, you know, everybody knows he cheated and everybody saw it. But, you know, the next month, I break my hand, and the dude, he's scared to wrestle me with one arm. I was telling everyone, I could beat him with one arm. I could beat him with one arm. I could do whatever I can with one arm. I was confident that I would have beat him that night. You were saying that in in the back room the whole night, and and Belladonna just didn't let you. Yeah. What's her name? Belladonna. Uh, She's she's an idiot. But anyway, I'm in the back. You know, no one's listening to me. I'm the hottest commodity in wrestling. Why would you not want me on your show? I'm what brings people to the show. The dude, one of these days, everyone's going to realize that he's just doing drugs, and they're going to stop bringing their kids to watch him wrestle. But I can't wrestle. The dude's scared of me. So I get my good friend Samuel Thompson to do my dirty work. And he did just that. He beat the dude just like I would have beat the dude that night. And then after the match, I, I'm beating him up. I'm kicking him and I'm hitting on him and doing all that stuff. And I see scissors come out of his bag. Now, I could think of a few things that a hippie could do with scissors, but what I had in mind was even better than anything he would ever do. I took those scissors and I cut 
some of the dude's hair off. And it felt great because he is disgusting. That hair, greasy, smelly. I don't think he's ever showered. And if he does, he does it in the river behind high ground. And that water doesn't smell very good, so he ain't cleaning it that well. And I cut a piece of his hair off, and man, it I got so much enjoyment out of that. For a guy with one arm, you know, that, that can't bike, he can't golf, he can't play the guitar, he can't do all the stuff that he normally does, that gave me so much enjoyment that I just wanted to do more and cut more. And then the commissioner came out, and she said, whoa, 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 what are you doing, what are you doing? And, you know, she has her big, tough security guard with her, which, who is this guy? Where did he come from? Couldn't tell you his name either. And, you know, we get out of the ring, and the dude, he's freaking out that I cut his hair, even though I'm just trying to do him a favor. He's freaking out, like, dude, I'm trying to clean you up a bit. Look nice for society. I just like you don't get very far. I'm just trying to clean you up. And she decides that on August 12th, at the Falcon's Nest, she wants a hair versus hair match between myself, Fletcher Young, and the dude. Like, what is she doing? I would have cut his hair perfectly. Like, I wasn't going to make it look bad. Now she wants me to shave his head off on August 12th once I beat him. We've seen we've seen it. Vince McMahon versus Donald Trump. What happened to Vince? He was shaved bald. Yeah. You know? When when Lashley and Stone Cold were shaving his head, they weren't doing it doing it nice and slow and making it look good. They were just going all in. And so that's what I'm going to do. The dude, I'm not going to care anymore. I'm just going to shave it all off. She made the match. Gave, she made it. I would have gave him a nice little corporate haircut. And you know, I'm not going to do that anymore. I am going to shave it off. The commissioner, it's on her hands now. It's not up to me anymore. It's up to her. If she wants to pull the match pull it because once I beat the dude, he's going to be ball and he's not going to look very good. Yeah. August 12th, Falcons Nest guys, make sure you get there. Uh, tickets at the door, tickets on sale online here shortly. So yeah. Is there a little bit of a click with you, Samuel and Valerie now, or was this a one-off? You know, you'll have to wait and see, honestly. I mean, Look at Sam and Val, two good looking people. You got myself, a good looking guy. I think we could we could, you know, make a name for ourselves at high ground if we stay together, but we'll have to wait and see. I mean, I don't have an issue with that, but those two are uh, you know, they're great at what they do. If they if they want some help from Fletcher Young, I'll give them some. If I need some help, maybe they'll help me out some more. But you know, we'll just have to wait and see. Switching back to some of the questions now, as we have, um, what would you change about professional wrestling? There's sometimes that, listen, I hate this. I really do. But I like knowing everybody's kind of insight. Sometimes people still give you like, oh, you're a wrestler or something like that. What do you want people to think better about wrestling? I want them to think that it is, I mean... It's sports entertainment, but at the same time, it hurts. So if you want to call wrestling fake, I just want you to get in the ring and let me suplex you. And if you can get up right away and tell me that didn't hurt, but hey, you could say whatever you want about pro wrestling, but you're going to feel it. You're going to know that, oh, wait, what's, what's under this mat? Is that wood? Oh, there's wood and a steel frame under there. Um, I want them to realize that this stuff isn't ballet we could get hurt i mean i broke my hand in the ring doing very simple stuff uh it was a freak accident but it happened in the ring and you know that's one thing i would change is people's perspective on oh this stuff doesn't hurt and all this and that um just get in the ring take a bump take two bumps take three bumps if you can take four take four but i doubt after three the average person who craps on this, who's frankly probably out of shape and couldn't run the ropes if they wanted to or take a bump or take do a roll. They couldn't do anything. So, you know, that would be the thing I'd change. I, and I would agree wholehearted with you. This question was supposed to be a while ago, but I'll bring it back now. Territories. Okay. Uh, how mm-hmm. far, first and foremost, how far back do you go when you're doing your tape study? Uh, I stick to, I mean, I know history, 
but watching is a different thing. You know, watching wrestling from the eighties where it's earthquake versus I don't know. Jake the Snake. Some, yeah. I mean, well he's he's a good one to watch though. But like if it's earthquake versus like Barry Horowitz. Duke dumpster Drosy or something hey, like that. Don't, but Duke's one of our whole OGs. <laughs> well, listen, if you watch like a match like that, there's what do you I he can't learn anything. I mean Kayfabe was Kayfabe back then. So what are you going to learn that, you know, the audience wasn't in on it yet. But, right. uh, I, I'll say nineties, like when Shawn Michaels came around, I mean, he was late eighties, but you know, I would say around that era. All right. Because this question goes to, we're going to put Fletcher Young in a territory in the eighties. I have mine mm-hmm. right off the bat that I think you would have shined in. I mean, granted, Fletcher Young was not around in the 80s, but still, if you could pick one of those territories, Smoky Mountain, AWA, World Class, you know the ones that I'm talking about, um, where do you think you would kind of get your roots and come up in? Uh, I would say Georgia Championship Wrestling. Why? It was just, it was more real, that that territory, you know, and guys were, it wasn't really... You know, I said I love storytelling, but I love physicality, too. And they were doing both. They had physicality and they had storytelling. So I think I could have shined there. I mean, you had guys like Ric Flair there who's walked around with $10,000 suits and all that stuff. But then you have the common man, Dusty Rhodes. And, you know, when you have that clash of, of lifestyles, it's very easy. So I I could, you know, put me in the horseman and see what happens. I love that you just brought up a stable because that's not where I have you. I have no. you I have you in world class because you could be one of the Von Erics. Mm. You, Von Erics. The, I mean, the, the, the look, you could have been like Lance's cousin or something like yeah. that. <laughs> you know, you, you could have been another cousin from down the line because you have yeah, that I you have that look. I, I definitely could have been the ladies would have gone crazy when I walked out, you know. Right. It would have been kissing and hugging and that was yeah, I mean that I was just the that. sex capital of the world down in Texas <laughs> at that point. It was. It was. They they could barely walk to the ring without getting groped and everything, you know? But I could I could see that. Okay. So I'm gonna start calling you a Von Eric from now on in the ring. <laughs> and then the yeah, whole well, the whole hatred comes back. Right, exactly. A couple more questions then I'll let you go. Thank you very much for this time. But um what is your dream match? You know, we can reincarnate anybody, bring them back up because this is a dream match. I want to know who, where, in the stipulation in the match. Let's see. If I say Cena, then the people cheer for me because they hated him. And right. I would go back to prime Cena in like PG era. Or I could say Stone Cold because then they would do everything I do because they would cheer anything that he does. So, I would go with Attitude Era, Stone Cold, like 98. Um, the arena would probably be, that's, just to be nice, it's going to be in Dallas, Texas. The Sportatorium? Sportatorium, where he first went to watch wrestling because the fans are going to love him. And so, I could put him in a headlock and they're going to boo me. And the stipulation... Let's make it. Oh man, stipulation. Let's make it a full rope match. Oh, okay, I was thinking once In, you said Stone Cold, I went to First Blood, but bull rope's just as good. I was thinking it, but I want the fans in Texas to get their money's worth. So, bull rope, Texas, Stone Cold, Sportatorium, place would go crazy. I could. I could poke them in the eye and they'll be throwing beer bottles at me. For sure. What is one match that you want to have in your career and one match that you'll say, Mm-mm, not happening? Meaning anything like stipulation. Glass, oh, I, I, yeah. Anything with glass, no, not happening. Anything with fire and all that BS, not happening. If it's in a backyard, it's not happening. Uh, too good for that. Not gonna lower myself to that. It's not. Uh, it's not ideal. I don't know why people do that, other than to get views on the internet. But hey, to each their own. And 
those guys will be they'll be dead before the fifty, I'm sure. While I'm still thriving. Touche. But one stipulation. <clears throat> I would say a ladder match. I think a ladder match would be fun. Um, put a title up there, put a briefcase up there, whatever it is. I think that would be a fun environment. I think do some creative stuff in there. And, uh, you know, let's put a bunch of guys in there, not just one on one match. Let's make it, you know, six guys in the ring and go all out. Oh, so a high ground contract match, essentially. Yeah. Yeah, high ground. You know, maybe they'll get a title one day and. I'm sure I'll be the first champion because I'm the best wrestler there, but let's put it up top. Let's see what happens. Agreed. Agreed. Goals for the rest of this year. Well, the hand is pretty much a hundred percent. So I can start wrestling again soon. So I would like to have about 10 more matches or 15 more matches before the year is over. I'm a busy guy. So 15 sounds good. Um, you know, just keep on getting better, keep on training hard. Um, yeah, I mean, and how about in two years? Cause I don't like years. the five years because holy hell things can change yeah. in a second, but two years is a nice little round number. Uh, two years. I would like to get out of Pennsylvania and venture wherever, you know, I just want to get in my car and go to Arkansas and wrestle or go to Idaho. Who knows? Just get out of PA, get out of the Northeast. and Arkansas is the first place that you could think of, Fletcher. Nothing against uh, my fans in Arkansas, but I don't know if listen, it's a hot spot for professional listen, wrestling. Those guys down there, they probably are 300 pounds and can't move, so it won't be very hard for me to beat them because I'll just run around the ropes. I'll run around the ring as fast as I can duck and dodge, they'll gas themselves, pull themselves up, and they'll probably just collapse and up in the month or three. So it'll probably be an easy, easy win down there. But uh, you know, take me take me wherever, California, Texas, Florida, wherever. I I got a car, I got money, I got I can get in a plane. Let me uh let me go try this elsewhere outside of uh northeast Pennsylvania. There you go. All right, this is your time. Tell everybody your socials, your merch, <laughs> what else is coming up for Fletcher. Well, Mark a heel doesn't sell merch, so you cannot buy any Fletcher Young merch anywhere. Uh, maybe if you brought, I don't know, offer me $100 for the t-shirt I'm wearing, and maybe I'll give it to you, because that just shows that you're an idiot, and we'll do anything to... I, I Same questions cool all the time. Wrestlers. Same time. The, the, the same questions all the time. I, I just go through. It's regurgitating. I'm, I apologize. You're right, though. Uh, um, yeah. Instagram, Fletcher Young underscore, and now... You can follow me on Threads too. Same one. I'm probably the first person to plug their Threads account here. Uh, that's also Fletcher Young underscore. And that's it for socials. Again, see me at High Ground um, August 12th. I'm sure we'll have other shows throughout the year. You can catch me there, but definitely check out the Instagram and uh, the Threads. Even though I don't know if Threads are going to survive or even what the hell is going on in there, but Fletcher Young underscore. Fletcher. I want to apologize for the the run-ins that we've had, and I will now, knowing your backstory and everything, will now treat you with respect. I, As you heard, my three wrestlers, I, I hold you in the highest regards of what you are going to do in this wrestling career. So thank you for coming on Can Crushers today. Well, Mark, you're welcome. And, uh, you know, I can't say I respect you anymore, but... We'll just have to see how things play out the next time I see it. Because once I see that face, it's, you have a punchable face. You know that, right? I, my mom told me that. Yeah, it's very punchable. So I can't promise I won't do anything, but but we'll just have to wait and see. All right. Thanks again. Hey, this is former WWE superstar Duke, the dumpster, Drossy, and you are listening to the Can Crushers podcast. So that went better than I thought it was. I think maybe Fletcher and I, he doesn't have respect for me, but I at least have respect for him. So we may be growing here. That That's all I really want out of all of this. He calls me a Mark all the time. Hey, my mom aptly named me Mark. She knew I was going to be a wrestling fan. So I'm okay with that. That If you think that's a derogatory Mark name towards me, eh, it's, it's not. It's okay. I'm all right with it. But Fletcher Young, how about me? Um... Pat myself on the back a little bit, pinpointed 
essentially who he is. Mr. Perfect, Barry Windham, and Shane Douglas, because he is going to be the franchise of wherever he steps his feet into, wherever he graces himself. Fletcher Young is the hottest commodity in professional wrestling. So everything I said in the back and over the couple months, I guess I'll pull it back because he's got the pedigree. He does. And what he says about, and I said about the attitude and everything, he's just better than you to not steal somebody else's, then that's me saying it. He He's just better. And he proves it in and out, time and time in the ring. So... Yeah, but to get into Fletcher's, you know, a la personal life a little bit with air quotes, it's great to see and learn a little bit that very much into fitness, very much into just continuing to better himself. And Fletcher, I believe, is one of those people in life that you do something 1% better today, it just continues to grow and grow and grow until it's up to, you know, the, the atmosphere and the stratosphere that you just can't touch him. That's the way he lives his lifestyle. You know, he is just taken care of in life with his job. And in wrestling, he's taking care of others, you know, by beating them down. Fletcher Young, guys, make sure you follow him on threads. He is the first professional wrestler now that has brought up threads on a spotlight. So we'll have to continue to see how many others jump on that bandwagon. But guys, it is all about this match, August 12th, High Ground Professional Wrestling, Fletcher Young versus a dude, hair versus hair at the Falcon's Nest. Unbelievable match. If you don't have your tickets, get out there, get them, make sure you get them at the door, whatever you need to do, be there because this is going to be a show stealer. It it really is. Uh, I I haven't seen a good hair versus hair match in a long time. My favorite is the Boogie Woogie Man, Jimmy Valiant against Pistol Pez Watley. I love that one. I love that one. So, yeah, Fletcher Young, follow him on all the socials. Make sure, if you want to be a bad guy, support him. When, when Fletcher becomes the man, the myth, the legend of everything, support him then. You've heard him here first on Can Crushers. Guys, remember, just because you're trash doesn't mean you can't do great things. It's called a garbage can, not a garbage cannot. Make sure you tell your loved ones you love them, because you never know.